My name is Jason and this is just watches. All right, we have a very interesting watch today from a brand called Watch Experimental Unit. Now they make both custom watches as well as limited runs that are based on historical watches, which include very hard to obtain historical watches, as is the case with this watch, which is an homage to an extremely rare watch, if you know what you are looking for. Now, before we begin the review, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So price and availability. Well, at the time of this recording, this particular model is sold out. It was limited to 100 pieces. However, WMT is constantly releasing new models and the MSRP on this watch was $550. So starting with the case, it's 39.5 millimeters in diameter. It's 47 millimeters lug to lug. It's 14.8 millimeters thick, but a lot of that is this massively domed acrylic crystal and then the lug opening is 20 millimeters. So this case has a super pleasing set of dimensions and is close to what I consider the perfect size for a watch of this style. The top of the case is brushed with a nice chamfered edge where the case transitions into a high polish side. The case is quite flat, but the 47 millimeter lug to lug makes that a non-issue for most wrist sizes. The lugs are pierced for easy strap changes. The brushing on the lugs is consistent with the brushing on the end links, and the case features crown guards, but they are very stubby and don't interfere with the operation of the watch via the crown. The watch wears flat across the wrist and is very comfortable. Sized for my six and three quarters inch wrist, it weighs in at 113 grams. The stock bracelet starts at 20 millimeters before tapering all the way down to 16 millimeters. The end link is a bit shorter than the lugs, and despite being a hollow end link, there is very little play between the end links and the head of the watch. The articulation of the bracelet both across the back of the watch and in between the individual links is very good. These two factors often result in a bracelet wearing much more comfortably, and that is true in this case. While the links are very robust, the clasp is a bit on the cheaper end. A thin metal clasp with a safety catch, the friction fit scissor is just stamped metal. Although this along with the pattern on the clasp to make it look like the rest of the bracelet, I believe are both nods to the watch it is homaging. Despite the cheaper clasp, the bracelet is very comfortable overall and you'll have plenty of micro positions to get a good fit. Finally, sizing is accomplished with screw pins which is a very convenient feature. The screw in case back helps with 100 meters of water resistance and has information about the watch around the edges. The WMT logo is also etched into the back along with the number 14080, which frankly I have no idea what that means or what it stands for. So if you do know, please leave me a comment below. This watch is powered by the Seiko NH35. This is a hacking hand winding 21,600 vibration per hour movement with a 42 hour power reserve and a stated accuracy of minus 20 to plus 47 seconds a day. However, in my experience, I find they usually run closer to plus or minus 10 seconds a day. It does have the ghost position, meaning that the date position is here and you can actually rotate the date wheel, but there's no aperture in the dial to view it. The seven millimeter screw down crown is signed with the WMT logo and nicely knurled. The crown is the perfect size for operating and winding this watch, even with the crown guards on the case. The threading and unthreading action is very smooth. The crown has a touch of wobble when the crown is deployed, but I'm not sure if that is a problem or just by design. The acrylic crystal on this watch is massively double domed. It's one of the largest I've seen and adds a ton of vintage charm to the watch. There's definitely a warmth and charm to an acrylic crystal, and while it does pick up scratches quite easily, they can also be easily removed using polywatch. The bezel is actually a friction bezel, so no clicking here, and this is my first experience with one. At first, I didn't think I would like it, but it has some positives. For one, you don't have to worry about bezel alignment, as you can always line it up perfectly. Secondly, I found it pretty useful to be able to turn the bezel in both directions, as I constantly use my dive bezels to time things. Now, for actual diving, you wouldn't want to rely on it, but let's be honest, that is not the purpose of this particular watch. Now, the bezel insert is vintage processed, aka made to look old and the effect is actually really good. The bezel looks faded by exposure to the sun, which includes the bezel pip at 12 o'clock. 
The dial has also been artificially aged. And again, I thought this was gonna look cheesy in person. I was never a fan of pre-ripped jeans, for example, but the execution on this dial is actually really good. The indices are loomed, but the aging seems random and inconsistent and doesn't look intentional. The dial itself is also modeled, appearing damaged by exposure to light over a long period of time. As for the design, we have dashes for each of the minutes with a large triangle at 12, rectangles at three, six, and nine, which greatly help with orientation, and then the remaining indices are circles. The WMT logo, brand name, and watch experimental unit are all written at 12, which is quite a bit of text, but I think it is offset by Subdiver, the water resistance, and the Royal Marine text at the six o'clock position. The dateless dial is also very symmetrical, and while I do like dates on my watches, I think this watch is greatly improved without having the date there. The Mercedes hour hand and baton minute hand are also artificially aged, looking slightly corroded around the edges and filled with the same aged loom as the indices. The second hand has a loom lollipop as well as counterbalance. Again, this aging effect on the hands is well done. The watch appears old, but not necessarily artificially so. Finally, I always have to comment on the length of the minute hand, which in this case is excellent. It's terminating at the dashes around the edge of the dial. Now, they really committed to the aged loom effect, so much so that the loom is awful. However, I'm fairly certain that this was a design choice. I think super bright and consistent loom would feel at odds with the rest of the watch and partially counteract the aged feel. Popping in on the time grapher, we're getting a nice result. It's running about minus two seconds a day in the dial up position with healthy amplitude and minimal beat error. And then in the crown up position, we're still seeing a good result zero seconds a day with a slight drop in amplitude and a very small increase in the beat error. And here is the watch on my six and three quarters inch wrist. This watch has an excellent set of dimensions and wears very comfortably and flat along the wrist. Despite being thick overall due to that domed crystal, the case itself is only about 12 millimeters thick. Starting with the pros, while I didn't think I was going to like it, I actually love the execution of the artificial aging of this watch. This in combination with the comfortable bracelet, the pleasing size, and the acrylic crystal make it a fun nod to a watch that is for most people impossible to obtain. As for cons, the dedication to aging also means the loom is useless, but I think this comes with the territory. The clasp is also somewhat cheap feeling, but again, I think this adds to the overall vintage feeling of this watch. Finally, it would have been nice if they used a no-date version of the NH movement to lose the ghost position. So is this watch worth the money? Well, I think this watch has a very specific audience. If you want the look of the watch it is homaging and you don't have the $100,000 plus it is going to take to buy the real thing, you could probably pick one of these up to potentially scratch that itch. And if you are in that camp, I think this is probably a great option for that. For me, who picked this watch up more out of curiosity, I think $550 is a touch expensive for a watch with the NH35 and would have loved to see this watch use a Miyota 9000 series. That being said, the artificial aging on the watch is really well done and not something you're going to come across with very many other watch brands. So I don't think it's correct to consider this type of watch from a strictly value perspective. If this watch is for you, I think you'll know it. And in that case, I think it will most likely be worth it for you. So there you have it, the WMT Royal Marine Subdiver. Let me know what you guys think about this watch in the comments below. Also, if you've ordered one of their custom watches and you'd like to weigh in on your experience, I would love if you would comment below regarding that as well. As always, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason and you have been watching Just Watches.